Although several professionals claim that sharks don't see humans as prey, these sea creatures do attack humans, and it often results in serious struggles for life. Even many incidents result in death. Stories of incidents like this will be narrated in this video. Just stick around and you'll be surprised. The sun cast a warm glow across the vast expanse of the ocean as marine biologist Alexander Reed, a 30-year-old with a deep passion for water creatures, navigated the research vessel off the coast of New South Wales, Australia. Accompanied by three fellow researchers, the vessel cut through the water with purpose, its destination set on unlocking the mysteries of shark behavior. Due to the mission, they have to utilize chumming, a practice that involves scattering a mixture of fish blood and oils into the water to attract sharks for observation. A cautious team member, Caroline expressed concerns about the potential dangers of attracting many sharks. She advised against chumming, emphasizing the unpredictable nature of these apex predators. Despite her warnings, Reed and the others decided to proceed. In their view, understanding shark behavior required direct interaction and chumming was deemed essential for a successful research expedition. Reed started the humming with the first three handfuls of the fishy mixture hitting the water, breaking its serene surface. Almost instantly, the ocean responded with a surge of energy. Dorsal fins sliced through the water, revealing the presence of multiple sharks drawn to the scent. The scene unfolding was awe-inspiring and undeniably tinged with an underlying sense of danger. Caroline's concerns seemed justified as the sharks circled the boat, their sleek bodies weaving through the chum-laden waters. Reed, undeterred, maintained a focused composure. The opportunity to observe these creatures in their natural habitat outweighed the risks in his eyes. Armed with cameras and scientific instruments, the team meticulously documented the shark's movements and interactions. The vessel bobbed gently on the water's surface, surrounded by the ominous presence of sharks drawn in by the chumming. Caroline diligently noted observations while Albert recorded the unfolding spectacle on video. Meanwhile, Reed got lost in conversation with fellow researcher Harry and continued throwing chum into the water without focusing on the task. In an instant, the serene atmosphere shattered as Reed slipped from the vessel's edge, plunging into the midst of sharks engaged in a feeding frenzy. The shock was immediate and overwhelming, triggering primal fear as churning waters enveloped him. Adrenaline surged through his body as he grappled with the urgency of finding an escape from the situation. Beneath the surface, the underwater world unveiled itself, a ballet of sleek and powerful bodies. The scent of chum on Reed's gloved hand drew some sharks to circle him in a display of predatory grace. As Reed assessed his surroundings, the tranquil research mission had morphed into a life-threatening ordeal. Reacting swiftly, Reed attempted to swim away from the chumming site to reach the vessel's safety. However, three sharks charged their predatory instincts locked onto the source of the disturbance. With adrenaline-fueled determination, Reed fought to distance himself from the approaching predators. One of the sharks, ahead of the others, closed in and clamped its powerful jaws onto Reed's leg. Fortunately, the flipper he wore absorbed the brunt of the attack, sacrificing itself to protect Reed. Undeterred, Reed continued his struggle for survival. Drawing on his training, Reed maneuvered quickly, removing the damaged flipper and wielding it as a makeshift deterrent against the encroaching sharks. His immediate goal was clear, escape the relentless pursuit and reach the safety of the research vessel. Swimming with every ounce of strength, Reed evaded the circling sharks until he reached the other side of the ship. He thought everything had ended, but there was still more to it. Just as he attempted to climb back onto the deck, two sharks, later identified as bull sharks, struck with ferocity, clamping their teeth onto Reed's legs. A gut-wrenching yell escaped him, piercing through the chaos and alerting the crew to the dire situation unfolding on the other side of the vessel. Reed clung desperately to a metal pole, battling against the relentless force of bull sharks attempting to pull him back into the water. A coordinated effort was swiftly initiated to pull him up to safety. The battle against the sharks was far from over, and as Reed emerged from the water, a shark still clung to his leg. Harry, displaying quick thinking and courage, grabbed a club on the deck and struck the shark repeatedly until it succumbed. The grip on Reed's leg was finally released and the immediate danger subsided. 
The research mission, now overshadowed by the harrowing incident, ended abruptly. Albert assumed command at the helm, urgently steering the vessel back towards the city. The severity of Reed's injuries demanded immediate medical attention. Upon reaching the land, Reed was rushed to the hospital, where the extent of the damage became apparent. While his leg bore the marks of a brutal struggle, the sharks that attacked him, though aggressive, were not large enough to inflict irreparable harm. The threat of amputation was averted, and medical intervention addressed the injuries without sacrificing essential tissues. Reed lay on the bed in the sterile hospital room, contemplating the fragile boundaries separating scientific exploration from the untamed wilderness. The scars on his leg symbolized the ocean's unpredictable nature, etched into his memory as a testament to the indomitable spirit of those who dared to venture into its depths. After months of rehabilitation and recovery, Reed returned to work, having been discharged from the hospital. He was celebrated for his resilience. However, the lessons learned this time were etched deep within his consciousness. The pursuit of knowledge came at a cost, and Reed approached his work with a newfound respect for the forces that lurked beneath the surface. The sun bathed the breathtaking coastline of one of Italy's tranquil regions in a warm golden glow as 20 Austrian tourists embarked on a luxury adventure cruise. Drawn by the allure of the crystal clear waters and the promise of rare encounters with nature. Organized by a tourism company in Austria, the group was expertly assembled and assigned knowledgeable guides fluent in Italian. On board their lavish cruise ship, guests reveled in luxury surrounding them, relishing the exclusivity accompanying this once-in-a-lifetime experience. Among the travelers was Jake Sabitzer, a thrill-seeker eager to push the boundaries of adventure. Jake is a man with an unquenchable thirst for exploration, but is tethered to the confines of his landlocked country. Working as an average earner in a government bureau, he grappled with the financial constraints between him and his dreams of traversing the globe. Undeterred by his modest income, Jake embarked on a journey of disciplined savings, determined to accumulate enough funds to turn his wanderlust into a reality. With its rich cultural tapestry, Italy beckoned to Jake as the first destination on his travel wish list. His love for the language and an insatiable desire to immerse himself in the picturesque scenery fueled his fascination with the Mediterranean jewel. Despite being 35 years old, Jake remained unmarried, a deliberate choice driven by his conviction that he needed to relish the freedom of a solitary existence before committing to a relationship that might curtail his adventures. Jake's job at the government bureau provided stability, but his meticulous savings plan fueled his dreams of international exploration. He diligently set aside some of his earnings, patiently watching his travel fund grow with each paycheck. The process was slow, requiring sacrifice and delayed gratification, but Jake remained resolute in his pursuit of a life beyond the borders of his homeland. Jake's determination bore fruit as the days turned into months and the months into years. His savings reached a tipping point, signaling the time to set his travel plans in motion. Italy awaited, and Jake, armed with a backpack and a heart full of wanderlust, embarked on the adventure he had long envisioned. In Italy, Jake's senses were treated to a symphony of sights, sounds, and flavors. He marveled at the ancient architecture, strolled through charming cobblestone streets, and indulged in the delectable cuisine that epitomized the essence of the Mediterranean. The language he had admired from afar became a living, breathing companion as he tried to interact with locals and absorb the cultural nuances that made Italy unique. After enjoying the boat cruise and resting at the beach for a picnic, Jake approached one of the guides, expressing his desire to jet ski. Following a brief dialogue with the rental shop owner, Jake found himself atop a powerful watercraft, ready to race through the turquoise waters. Eager to seize the moment, Jake revved up the jet ski, leaving a foamy wake as he sped across the ocean. The sea breeze tousled his hair, and the warm sun kissed his skin, creating an exhilarating rush that heightened the beauty of the Italian coastline. As Jake maneuvered the jet ski, the rest of the group returned to the yacht, some observing him from the deck. Unseen by Jake, a crew member spotted a shark gliding dangerously close. Urgent shouts echoed across the water as the crew tried to alert Jake to the impending danger. Ignorant of the peril, Jake continued his course. 
Despite multiple attempts to reach him, Jake remained oblivious due to the watercraft engine noise drowning out the frantic warnings. He wanted to hear what they said, so he approached the yacht and stopped the jet ski. It was in this moment of vulnerability that the unfortunate incident unfolded. Beneath the surface, the tranquility shattered as a shark emerged and clamped its jaws onto Jake's calf with the watercraft. Some tourists witnessed Jake's anguished yell and sprang into action, hitting the alarm to alert the guides and initiating a coordinated response to the unprecedented situation. While the guests aboard grappled with the shock of the situation, the crew swiftly coordinated a response. The captain skillfully maneuvered the yacht closer to Jake, while a crew member retrieved a tranquilizer from the emergency kit. With precision, the tranquilizer was fired at the shark, delivering a potent poison that forced the predator to release its grip on Jake. The once aggressive shark, now incapacitated, allowed a safer environment to rescue the distressed jet skier. The atmosphere remained tense on the yacht as Jake's heart pounded in his chest. Blood gushed from the open wound inflicted by the shark's jaws. The yacht, now transformed into a vessel of urgency, was skillfully maneuvered towards the shore. Jake's need for immediate medical attention prompted the decision to head for the nearest landmass. Upon reaching the shore, emergency responders were ready to assist. Jake, still in a state of shock, was swiftly transported to the hospital. The severity of his injuries became apparent, requiring immediate medical intervention to address the deep wound on his calf. Medical professionals worked efficiently to tend to Jake's injuries. The gaping wound, a testament to the unexpected encounter with the shark, demanded careful attention. Over 20 stitches were skillfully administered, meticulously closing the open wound and ensuring the best possible recovery for Jake. While the cruise continued, a conspicuous absence marked the experience for Jake, who remained in the hospital throughout the voyage. The once anticipated adventure became a stark reminder of the unpredictability lurking beneath the ocean's surface. Upon the expiration of his stay visa, Jake had to return to his home country like other tourists and continue his ongoing medical treatment. The bureaucratic constraints dictated his departure, signaling a bitter end to his Italy adventure and he couldn't explore the country to his heart's content. The shark incident was rare in that region and it became an unforgettable event, leaving an indelible mark on the collective memory of those who bore witness to the uncommon clash between human recreation and nature's wild forces. In response to the incident, government authorities took proactive measures to prevent future occurrences. The water was temporarily closed to ensure safety and underwent thorough research and scrutiny. The tranquilizer immobilized the shark so it was quickly recovered from the water. The incident, though unsettling, prompted valuable research and heightened awareness about the potential risks inherent in coastal tourism. The salty breeze hung heavy in the air as the boat, specially equipped for the thrilling escapade, cut through the waves off the coast of South Africa. A group of Iranian tourists seeking the ultimate adventure had journeyed here for a once-in-a-lifetime experience, shark cage diving. Nature enthusiasts at heart eagerly donned their wetsuits, their excitement palpable in the air. The cage, securely fastened to the boat, dangled above the clear blue water, an open invitation to an encounter with the ocean's most formidable predators. The captain, Connor Williams, is an experienced guide in shark diving. He reassured the tourists of the safety measures meticulously in place. Connor also emphasized the rarity of incidents in carefully orchestrated excursions of this nature, instilling confidence in the group. The tourists descended into the submerged cage with a mixture of trepidation and anticipation. The cool water enveloped them and within seconds they adjusted to the underwater world, the cage bars providing a semblance of security against the unknown. As they peered through the bars, the vast expanse of the ocean unfolded before them, revealing the mysteries hidden beneath the surface. The boat crew, well versed in the intricacies of shark cage diving, tossed a mixture of fish blood and oils into the water to attract sharks. The scent dispersed through the ocean, creating an irresistible allure for the apex predators. Excitement rippled through the cage as the anticipation of a close encounter with these majestic creatures intensified. Within moments, shadows appeared in the water, sleek and powerful. The first shark, drawn by the scent, glided into view. 
The tourists, awestruck, marveled at the creature's grace and power as it circled the cage. The captain provided insights into the species they were encountering, fostering an appreciation for sharks' vital role in maintaining the marine ecosystem. As more sharks approached, the underwater ballet unfolded. The tourists, captivated by the intricate movements of the predators, felt a profound connection with the ocean's wild beauty. The experience transcended mere observation. It became a symbiotic dance between humans and sharks, separated by the safety of the cage. Amidst the awe-inspiring encounter, the captain continued to share knowledge about shark behavior, debunking myths and emphasizing the importance of conservation. The tourists, submerged in this immersive experience, gained a newfound respect for these creatures unfairly vilified in popular culture. However, amid the captivating spectacle, the unexpected unfolded. A vast, great white shark, attracted by the chum, approached the cage curiously. The mood within the cage shifted from excitement to a heightened sense of awareness. Maintaining a watchful eye, the crew remained prepared to intervene if necessary. As the great white shark circled the cage, its massive form created a sense of wonder and a subtle undercurrent of tension. Though momentarily startled, the tourists remained transfixed by the majestic display of nature's power. The captain, experienced in navigating such situations, ensured a controlled environment, emphasizing the rarity of direct interactions with the sharks. The encounter, a delicate balance between thrill and respect, continued. The situation took an unexpected turn when the curious shark, perhaps misjudging its size, attempted to investigate the cage more closely. A part of its head slipped through the bars, breaking the perceived boundary between the tourists and the ocean's most feared creature. Panic tinged the initial excitement as the tourists grappled with the reality of sharing a confined space with a living embodiment of primal power. Inside the cage, claustrophobia set in as the tourists, now acutely aware of the precarious situation, recoiled from the encroaching shark. The confined space, once a vantage point for safe observation, became a crucible of fear and adrenaline. Undeterred by the bars restricting its movement, the shark tried to explore the interior. Terrified struggles echoed through the water as the tourists scrambled to the corners of the cage, desperate to put distance between themselves and the intruding predator. Among them, Abdul Jabbar found himself at the edge of the cage. Casting a panicked glance behind him, he spotted another shark approaching from a different angle. In a reflexive cry of fear, Abdul sprinted back toward the side where the first shark lingered. In doing so, his desperate move inadvertently pushed his fellow tourists toward the second oncoming shark. The closest among them, a lady, bore the brunt of the attack as the shark clamped its jaws onto her arm, causing a sudden searing pain that rippled through her. The water surrounding them clouded with a burst of crimson as the reality of the shark attack sank in. Panic and chaos ensued within the confines of the cage. Some tourists, driven by adrenaline and fear, unleashed punches at the shark's face and nose in a desperate attempt to free their companion from its grip. It was a harrowing struggle against the primal force of the ocean's apex predator. The injured tourist fought valiantly to free herself, the turbulent waters now tinged with blood. Her fellow cage occupants, still grappling with shock and fear, persisted in prying the shark away from their companion. After tense moments, a collective surge of strength wrested the injured tourist from the shark's grasp. The adrenaline-fueled struggle had taken its toll, but the injured lady emerged from the underwater encounter with her life intact. The captain, wise to the situation's urgency, swiftly signaled for the crew to initiate the emergency ascent procedure. The safety of the cage occupants became the paramount concern. Now, in emergency response mode, the captain and crew worked with practiced precision to raise the cage to the boat's deck. The seconds stretched into an agonizing eternity as the injured tourist, bleeding but conscious, awaited the ascent to the surface. The cage breached the water's surface, revealing a tableau of relief and distress, a mixture of faces marked by the intensity of the unexpected ordeal. Once on the boat, the injured tourist received immediate medical attention. The crew, trained in first aid and emergency response, assessed the extent of the wound and provided the necessary care. The reality of the situation hung heavy in the air. A thrilling adventure had abruptly transformed into a harrowing ordeal, leaving the tourists and crew shaken but focused on ensuring the injured individual's well-being. 
With the cage now secured on the boat's deck, the vessel sped toward the shore with renewed urgency. The crew stabilized the injured tourist, conscious but in pain as the boat cut through the waves. On reaching the shore, the injured lady was promptly transferred to a waiting ambulance, which rushed her to the hospital. There, medical professionals swiftly took charge. The wound, resulting from an unexpected clash with the ocean's apex predator, required careful attention. Stitches closed the gash and additional medical care addressed the aftermath of the traumatic encounter. As the injured tourist lay in the hospital, the echoes of the underwater struggle still reverberating in her mind. The reality of the delicate balance between thrill-seeking adventures and the unpredictable forces of nature became all too apparent. The cage diving expedition, meant to offer a glimpse into the mysterious world of sharks, had left an indelible mark, a testament to the untamed power beneath the ocean's surface. The incident served as a reminder of the inherent risks associated with close encounters with wildlife, even within controlled environments. The tourists, forever changed by the unexpected turn of events, now carried with them the memories of awe-inspiring moments with sharks and the resilience and courage displayed in the face of danger. A high school teacher in one of Australia's esteemed institutions, Emily Turner epitomized dedication in her profession and personal pursuits. Beyond the classroom, Emily harbored a passion for swimming, a therapeutic escape from the scars of a sorrowful past. Behind the facade of academic excellence, Emily bore the wounds of an abusive marriage. Her healing journey commenced when she found the courage to break free from the shackles of her oppressive relationship. Filing for divorce, she left the haunting shadows of her past behind and embarked on a transformative journey of self-discovery. Since then, swimming has become more than a pastime for Emily. It evolved into a sanctuary where she found solace and reclaimed her strength. Her expertise in the water grew and she became a notable figure in swimming competitions, channeling her pain into the rhythmic strokes that propelled her forward. One day, feeling the need to break free from the confines of chlorinated pools, Emily decided to explore the open waters of her community's beach. The bay, with its reputation for tranquil currents and serene ambiance, beckoned to her. It was more than a body of water. It symbolized liberation and a canvas on which Emily could paint a new chapter of her life. In the Australian Bay's gentle embrace, Emily found solace and a renewed sense of purpose. The open waters, once uncharted and daunting, became a symbolic horizon where the scars of her past faded with each stroke. Emily's story became a beacon of hope, reminding all who witnessed her journey that even in the vast sea of life's challenges, there is always a shore of redemption waiting to be embraced. That day, Emily's lithe form glided through the bay with a grace honed by years of rigorous training. The rhythmic strokes of her arms propelled her through the water, each movement a testament to her commitment to the sport. The beauty of the bay unfolded as she swam, the azure water stretching into the horizon, the distant hills cradling the shoreline, and the rhythmic lull of the waves against the rocks. It was a scene that had become synonymous with tranquility for the close-knit community. As Emily completed another lap, the peaceful tableau was shattered instantly. The bay's tranquility transformed into chaos as a shadow emerged beneath the water's surface. A shark, driven by territorial instincts, surged towards Emily with a burst of speed. The once calm water churned violently as the apex predator closed the distance between them. Momentarily oblivious to the impending threat, Emily was jolted into awareness when a sudden force gripped her leg. Panic surged as she felt the relentless pull, her instincts screaming that something was wrong. Amid the shock, the bay's peaceful reputation was shattered replaced by the stark reality of survival. The attack unfolded in seconds, but its consequences reverberated through the community. Screams paralyzed onlookers on the shore as they witnessed the unthinkable. A shark attacking in waters known for their gentle currents. A sense of disbelief gripped the bystanders, and the commotion on the shore drew attention from beachgoers and residents alike. In the ensuing chaos, some rushed to the water's edge while others dialed emergency services the gravity of the situation sinking in. The beachgoers rallied into action as Emily fought to free herself from the shark's grip. Brave individuals on nearby boats and kayaks maneuvered towards the scene, driven by a collective sense of urgency and the innate human instinct to help in times of crisis. 
The shark, sensing the urgency and experiencing hits and attacks from other human beings, eventually released its hold on Emily's leg. Blood stained the water, a visceral reminder of the clash between human recreation and the natural order of the sea. Emily, now free but injured, was pulled to safety by the swift response of those who had rushed to her aid. Emergency medical teams arrived promptly, their expertise bridging the gap between a tranquil day at the bay and an unforeseen tragedy. Emily was stabilized and transported to the hospital, where the community anxiously awaited updates on her condition. The bay, now quiet in the aftermath, bore the weight of a profound shift in perception, a realization that the seemingly serene waters were not immune to the unpredictability of nature. News of the shark attack spread rapidly, reaching far beyond the boundaries of the small coastal community. The incident prompted discussions about the delicate balance between human activity and the inherent risks of sharing waters with wild inhabitants. DNA samples from Emily's wetsuit were used to identify the shark species, and researchers at the lab attempted to gauge the shark's size based on the bite marks on her wetsuit. Both physical and emotional, Emily's recovery became a focal point for the community's healing process. As news of her progress spread, the residents found solace in the resilience of one of their own. The bay, forever changed by the events of that fateful day, became a symbol of both vulnerability and strength, a reminder that nature, with all its beauty and peril, could not be easily tamed or controlled. In the following months, the community embarked on initiatives to understand better and coexist with the marine life that shared their bay. Educational programs were implemented, bringing marine biologists and conservationists to engage with residents and visitors alike. The once idyllic bay became a living laboratory for fostering a harmonious relationship between humans and the wild. The incident prompted a re-evaluation of how the community interacted with its natural surroundings. Once carefree in the bay's waters, swimmers now approached the sea with cautious respect. Signs and information boards dotted the coastline, providing insights into the local marine ecosystem and offering guidelines for safe recreation. The community's newfound awareness extended beyond precautionary measures. Residents participated in beach cleanups and coastal conservation efforts, recognizing the interconnectedness of their actions with the well-being of the bay's diverse ecosystem. The incident became a catalyst for fostering a sense of environmental stewardship among the community members. Visitors to the bay also underwent a shift in perspective. Armed with knowledge about marine life and the importance of responsible interaction, they embraced a more conscious approach to enjoying the coastal paradise. Once centered solely on recreation, tourism evolved into an opportunity for environmental education and awareness. Marshall Murdo found himself at a crossroads, burdened by a mountain of bills that seemed impossible. His cramped apartment echoed the financial strain, and the persistent knocks of overdue notices were a constant reminder of the precariousness of his situation. Rent loomed like a relentless specter, and the weight of outstanding loan payments at work added to the growing pressure. Amidst this financial dilemma, Marshall's wife had recently given birth, bringing joy and an added layer of responsibility. The stark reality tempered the euphoria of parenthood that their growing family needed financial stability. The hospital bills and the expenses of caring for a newborn also piled onto the existing financial burden creating a sense of urgency for Marshall to find a solution. In a stroke of luck, or perhaps desperation, Marshall stumbled upon a reality show offering a substantial cash prize. It was the lifeline he needed, a chance to untangle the web of financial obligations that threatened to suffocate him. The allure of the prize money became a beacon of hope in the darkness of his financial struggles. Determined to secure his family's future, Marshall saw the reality show as his ticket to financial freedom. The competition, challenging contestants to navigate treacherous waters armed only with a spear, became his chosen battleground. The promise of a substantial cash prize was the driving force behind his decision to enter the fray. The reality show was on a deserted island. The sun's relentless rays shone on everyone, casting a shimmering glow over the pristine beaches, dense jungles, and seemingly untouched waters that served as the battleground for the survival-themed reality show. 
The mix of seasoned adventurers and eager novices, including Marshall, enticed by the allure of a substantial prize, faced the challenges of navigating this idyllic yet desolate paradise. The heart of the competition lay in the underwater arena, where contestants armed only with a spear were tasked with hunting and catching fish. Gripping their makeshift spears tightly, they ventured into the aquatic labyrinth as the signal echoed through the jungle, signaling the commencement of the high-stakes challenge. Fueled by determination and the promise of victory, Marshall waded into the shallows where the azure water met the sandy shore. Cameras closely followed his every move, capturing the picturesque scene of the contestant entering the crystal-clear waters. The underwater realm was a hotspot for marine life, and the producers had unwittingly created a stage where contestants would showcase their skills and engage in an unpredictable dance with danger. As Marshall focused on the task at hand, the rhythmic movements of the water behind him hinted at an unseen presence. A shadow glided stealthily through the depths, drawing closer to Marshall. The underwater drama unfolded unbeknownst to the contestant, who remained focused on his quest for a winning catch. Suddenly, the stillness of the water betrayed a moment of suspense as Marshall, sensing a shift in the underwater currents, quickly turned to check for any signs of the lurking danger. However, the fleeting glimpse revealed nothing out of the ordinary. Amidst the intense competition, Marshall, like his fellow contestants, grappled with the challenges of hunting in the vast underwater arena. Some secured impressive catches, while others struggled against the elusive marine creatures that seemed to elude their every move. The first indication of trouble came when the tranquil waters around Marshall erupted into a chaotic frenzy. Initially focused on the contestants navigating the underwater arena, the cameras swiftly pivoted to capture the sudden disturbance. One of Marshall's fellow contestants, who had been nearby, stumbled backward, his spear slipping from his grasp. Panic rippled through the contestants as the reality of the situation unfolded. An unexpected and unscripted encounter with a much larger and more formidable adversary, a great white shark. Bewildered by the sudden turn of events, Marshall abandoned the spearfishing mission for a much more crucial one, preserving his own life. The safety protocols embedded in the set immediately kicked in. Initially captivated by the unfolding drama, the production crew shifted seamlessly into emergency response mode. The director's commands echoed through the air, urgently instructing everyone to evacuate the area while the medical team raced towards the scene. In the water, Marshall swam desperately to evade the shark's advances. Adrenaline surged through his veins as the harsh reality of the attack set in. The tranquil island, carefully chosen as the location for the scripted competition, had abruptly transformed into the stage for an unscripted struggle between human survival and primal instinct. The great white shark, navigating the water with alarming agility, caught up and relentlessly attacked Marshall. Its massive jaw clamped onto Marshall's thigh, and the struggle intensified as the shark sought to pull him beneath the water's surface. The production crew, now on high alert, coordinated seamlessly with the emergency response team to ensure the safety of the attacked contestant. Swift actions were taken to repel the shark and extricate Marshall from its grip. The underwater struggle unfolded as the emergency team, armed with specialized equipment, intervened to fend off the great white shark and secure Marshall's release. After a tense and dangerous few moments, the emergency response team successfully thwarted the shark's advances, allowing Marshall to break free from its grip. Though shaken and undoubtedly bearing the physical and emotional scars of the encounter, Marshall was fortunate to escape the clutches of the great white shark. The immediate priority shifted to his medical care as the emergency team swiftly attended to his injuries. The incident served as a stark reminder of the inherent risks entailed in orchestrating intense competitions in the untamed environments of nature. As the reality show's production crew grappled with the aftermath, a profound reassessment of safety measures and risk protocols ensued. The incident prompted a thorough review of the chosen locations, the presence of marine life, and the comprehensive preparedness for unforeseen circumstances. The balance between thrilling entertainment and ensuring the well-being of contestants became a critical focal point in subsequent discussions. The unscripted encounter with the great white shark left an indelible mark on the reality show, 
reshaping its narrative and forcing a reckoning with the unpredictable nature of the wild. Marshall's survival became a testament to the swift and coordinated response of the production and emergency teams, highlighting the challenges inherent in staging high-stakes competitions in the uncharted territories of nature. News of the shocking shark attack spread rapidly, capturing the attention of the media. The line between entertainment and reality blurred as the incident prompted a broader conversation about reality TV's ethical considerations and the producer's responsibility to ensure participants' safety. The production team went under scrutiny and faced criticism. Questions were raised about the thoroughness of location assessments and the potential risks of choosing an environment known for its diverse marine life. The incident, though unplanned, became a catalyst for introspection within the reality TV industry. The reunion for the management students of Florida University had finally arrived, marking the end of their academic journey and the beginning of a new chapter in their lives. Amidst the crowd, three inseparable friends, Alfie Robbins, George Lucas, and Donald Green, stood side by side, their faces beaming with accomplishment. Having aced their tough final exams, they were eager to celebrate their success on the shores of a serene Florida beach. The trio had arrived early, securing a prime spot on the pier, where the rhythmic lull of the waves created a soothing backdrop to their joyous gathering. As the clock struck 7 p.m., the evening unfolded into vibrant laughter, music, and shared memories. The air was filled with the scent of salty sea breeze, and the distant sounds of waves crashing against the shore echoed the rhythm of celebration. The reunion blended relief, happiness, and the promise of a bright future. They all embraced the freedom that came with completing their academic journey. They reminisced about late-night study sessions, challenging assignments, and the camaraderie that had sustained them through the ups and downs of university life. Many made impromptu speeches, expressing gratitude to professors and acknowledging the unwavering support of friends and family. As the night progressed, the glow of bonfires illuminated the beach, casting a warm glow on the faces of the graduates. Under the influence of celebration, Alfie joined several friends in a drunk truth and dare game on the beach pier. The bottle spun its way to Alfie, who embraced the daring act of jumping into the water from the beach pier. The edge of the pier loomed in the moonlit night, standing as a challenge to his intoxicated bravery. With cheers from his friends, Alfie approached the edge since they were sitting on the wooden structure, feeling the cool breeze. Robbins jumped into the water after cheers from his friend. He immersed himself in the cool embrace of the ocean and was waddling like a duck while laughing at his friend. Suddenly, the water around him erupted into chaos, and Alfie disappeared. On the pier, Alfie's friends were initially surprised by his sudden disappearance beneath the waves after the eruption. Donald and others even went to the edge of the pier to check. Still, they only caught a glimpse of an adrenaline figure gliding through the water. Drawn by the unusual luminosity, the creature's massive form moved gracefully through the depths, but they didn't pay much notice to it due to being inebriated. After gazing at the water for a while, they assumed he had momentarily gone underwater for a playful moment, or he had swam to the shore to join other groups. Laughter continued and the festivities persisted masking the unfolding tragedy beneath the surface. Hours passed, and the beach slowly emptied as the night gave way to the early morning hours. The sun began to rise, casting its golden hues on the now tranquil waters. The party-goers dispersed, leaving only the memory of a magical night behind. Around 6 a.m. the next day, as the last stragglers departed, Donald, Alfie's neighbor and tight friend, arrived home. When asked about Alfie's whereabouts, Donald struggled to recollect the previous night's events. He recalled the shocking incident only when prompted by concerned neighbors and Alfie's mom. While going down memory lane, he suddenly shouted, Shark! when he remembered that he saw a figure in the water. Sensing the urgency, Alfie's mother accompanied Donald to the police station to report her missing son. Authorities swiftly initiated a search operation, but the timeline was blurred and details were hazy due to the alcohol-fueled haze of the previous night. Several search teams scoured the coastline with helicopters and other sonar instruments, hoping to locate Alfie. Days passed in agonizing uncertainty until tragically his lifeless body surfaced. He had become swollen from the water and his injuries were apparent. 
It was a big gash on his leg, arms, and neck. Perhaps as Alfie tried to fight for his life and escape the shark's jaw, he was pulled deeper into the dark abyss. The open injuries on him showed that he was attacked more than once, which rendered him lifeless even before he could drown. During the two days that Alfie went missing, the news had spread far and wide, capturing the attention of both local and national media. Journalists began weaving speculative narratives, suggesting various theories. Alfie's body was carefully evacuated and transported to the morgue for autopsy. It was these findings that confirmed the grim reality that a shark attacked him and could likely be a great white shark due to the size of Alfie's injury. The location of these wounds gives the media the edge as they narrate different stories. Some of them even projected that Robbins tried to fight his way out of the shark's grip, but it hardened the grip, which was evident in how deep the wound was. According to the news agency, the shark released its jaw a little, but it changed its attack to a more dangerous spot, and that seemed to extinguish Alfie's life. His parents, confronted with the devastating news, were overwhelmed with shock and grief. The joyous occasion of their son's graduation had transformed into an indescribable loss, leaving them to grapple with the painful aftermath of a night that had promised celebration, but had ended in unspeakable tragedy. The news of Alfie's tragic demise sent shockwaves through the tight-knit community of friends and schoolmates. The disbelief lingered in the air, shrouding the campus in a heavy silence that echoed the profound loss they had all experienced. Alfie's family, friends, and schoolmates gathered for his burial and were shocked at the sudden shift. The sad occasion was tinged with shock and regret as whispers of blame circled, connecting his demise to that night of truth and dare and the influence of alcohol. The reality of his departure weighed heavily on the hearts of those who couldn't comprehend the tragic turn of events. An intensified search for answers marked the aftermath of Alfie's burial. The police, fueled by a sense of duty and community concern, diligently combed the waters surrounding the beach. The closure of the beach itself became a sad reminder of the tragedy. The once lively shores now transformed into a symbol of loss and uncertainty. Days turned into weeks, and the community held its breath, hoping for closure and an elusive sense of peace. Despite the exhaustive efforts, the assailant remained elusive. The ocean guarded its secrets, leaving the community haunted by the unresolved mystery of Alfie's tragic end. The prolonged closure of the beach became a testament to the unpredictability of nature and the vulnerability of human life, a stark contrast to the carefree days of celebration that had preceded this dark turn of events. In the end, Alfie's tragic end left an indelible mark on the community, a scar that served as a stark reminder of the fragility of life. His parents had to find a way to live through the tragedy.